Sorry. Did this all go? <laughs> I'm having, I'm having the, yeah, this hasn't happened before. Oh dear. I think, uh, it's you. I think, I think it all crashed for a second. <laughs> I think it all crashed, yeah. I just went so my, my computer is just probably hanging on like this. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so as well on my screen. Um, yeah, it's just to say that I, I thought it was a, um, a really um, a beautiful idea, really. Um, so look forward. To, but I'll be around to see some, some of its iterations in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's really. Oh, yeah. oh but also I, I think. Uh, oh, am I interrupting? No, go for it. Oh yeah, no, I just, because I also think that there is these ideas of future also like throughout the whole um, two days we've been talking about transmission between bodies and what that means. And um, I'm actually really struck in, uh, by, by the way in which, you know, all of the movement responses and the, the conversations and, you know, the different presentations um, have really held that idea of transmission, you know, in, in general. And I also wondered, like, I know we are, I know we are looking, we are looking through this lens of what we're going through at the moment, but I also thought the way in which people chose to reconnect back in with themselves is very special and very interesting. It's like, it's kind of thrown open, um, it's, it's thrown open like a, a real connection also back into nature, time to think about these lineages that are passing through us. Uh, these times, you know, a time to notice the detail. I, I uh, notes everywhere, but I can't remember, but I, somebody was talking about that idea of noticing detail. Um, and I feel uh, that that also, um, yeah, may, maybe just if anybody wants to talk about, about that side of things, the idea of, of detail and, I don't know. I should have asked a question, shouldn't I? Well, also the reason why I'm saying that is because I'm also thinking in terms of with them, um, this has forced a process, like for example, with Sarah this morning with the workshop and also um, Kevin also took part in this blog that we have been, uh, that we've been doing with the company, with this Roach company. And also it has been an opportunity. Now it has been something that we started last year, but it has been an opportunity to sit with movement and, and pick it apart and have time to write about it and have time to, to be able to spend time with movement or spend time with past experiences. Um, and I also wondered, um, you know, this morning, how that felt for people. I know we really rushed through it, but how it felt for people to be part of Sarah's session where she, she taught the movement, but she also just expressed, she, she really spoke about it in, like all the world around each movement. And I suppose I feel we wouldn't normally have time to do that. So maybe if there's any response yeah. around that. Yeah, um, I don't know if I'll be able to say what I'm thinking. Um, it, it kind of links the different things. Um, first thing, I think new, the quest, the quest for new is very much one of the main elements of the DNA of Western culture. I remember somebody describing that as a spiral, as opposed to maybe the circle in, in, in Eastern culture. So it's a spiral that breaks open because it wants to go forward, it wants to go somewhere. And so there's a quest, and I think we've experienced a, an acceleration of that spiral really strongly. And, and if anything, I think maybe Dancers are people who suffer that speed, that we need more time. We need that reality of the real time of the, of the flesh and the weight and the muscle. And so we're actually always requesting that time to just feel the tiny detail in the heel or what is it? And, and maybe I was thinking, if there's a sense of legacy, maybe it's, it's collective. It's, it's, there's something about Uh, a sort of integrity of that sort of life, flesh, time, wanting to be able to experience that thing in that life, flesh, time reality. And, um, and, and I mean, one of the first breakups of that in our culture is the industrialization process 
by which Taylor invented that genius idea to break up gesture. So instead of somebody realizing an entire process, he does just one gesture. And that's the day when we disintegrated the bodies. I mean, we disintegrated the purpose from the gesture, from the time, and somebody just does a little bit, and so it loses sense. And that has been accelerating. But that's a landmark, that's a key of how uh, Western culture has developed over the industrialization period by breaking up gesture. And so that means by, for us, disintegrating our, disintegrating our sense of my body's here, for a certain purpose going somewhere. No, it's just doing one gesture that makes no sense. You can go crazy doing it. I mean, that's Charles Chaplin's film. Um, and so maybe as a sort of legacy, what we're trying to do, and I don't want to speak in everybody's <laughs> name, but, but as dancers, maybe we're opposing some sort of massive live weight to that, that we want to be those integrated bodies, that the gesture makes sense, that it has real time. And somehow we almost like Don Quixote is trying to hold that time, reality, body, real presence of the body here in a real time. Um, maybe we're trying to protect that. I had that feeling for a long time, but somehow we're trying to carry this along maybe for the future, for next generations, that this is still what we are as human beings, as, as biological human beings, that we need that extra time, that we need the feeling, that we need the sense that goes with it, that keeps us um, integrated. And just to bounce on what Liz was saying, but with this time, what Sarah was giving the, court, the class this morning, the moment that you started to describe and we were slowly doing the things with only the description, all made sense. Like before, right and left was completely, I was totally out of my body. I was watching the camera, I was getting confused. The right was the left, then it's the camera that is just changing the angles. And, and I, I got a bit frustrated. I was like, oh, you know, we are going to do a festival. And I started to do master classes online. I said like, forget it, this is just not, <laughs> it's a waste of time, I don't know. But actually it didn't, it all became, it's like if, my and then we are talking to dancers we are this trained bodies we have it's like we forget sometimes because we haven't been doing this for a while <laughs> and it's like a bicycle that i forgot to cycle but then you just start talking to me and this it was something ancient and trained and the legacy was just there and i knew exactly what to do and it was just really the thing to say oh i am a dancer how many times we remember that we are those dancers because sometimes we go into this other path and where festivals do learn a lot of academy but in the moment that body is being thing to feed that and the way that you that it was called it was through these words more than to the learning process it's just Mm -hmm. Interesting. Susan Sentler, um, and it's to do with archiving and it's to do with, um, and links in a little bit to what you were talking about, Liz, in relation to Sarah's work. So like also moving beyond the body um, and looking at different ways of, um, I suppose, archiving materials. So she was asking this in relation to Theo's project, but also out to everybody as well. And um, how, you know, like we talk a bit about, you know, the, and Paul was talking about this in Fanola, about the looking at these old VHS tapes of, of dances, you know, and kind of, look at, you know, really bad quality digital archiving of that time, you know? And then when we talk about archiving now, um, and not just to keep it in the digital, which is actually very kind of transient and dangerous place to throw everything in, because if it all goes, it's gone, you know. So I think we, we, what, if, you, if you could maybe comment on the idea of other ways of, of, of um, archiving and capturing through different materials, through different senses, through different relationships to movement. A little bit what Sarah was doing in the blog of these different kind of rhythms in the body and these different kind of codes almost, and then these different images in her mind about the movement. So I think it's kind of open to everybody maybe to see about, you know, other ways that you capture, archive your experiences as dancers or.
You can unmute yourselves if you want to speak. Or... I can talk a little bit. Um, I'm just thinking of like specific experiences. Um, uh, is it relevant? I think it's relevant. Uh, learning um, accumulation, Trisha Brown's accumulation, 1971, the solo with the Grateful Dead music and being in a process with two of the ex-company dancers in New York and there was a standardized version that they were teaching the company who would then perform this solo but when I arrived there they decided to go back to the original footage um, of Trisha performing the work and just have these really vivid memories of like looking at the old video footage they had and both of these <laughs> women squealing because they saw another slight hip angle which they'd never noticed before so kind of something about going back to the original um footage in that in that scenario and kind of the being witness to them learning something new about it as a dancer receiving the work and inheriting the work was really exciting rather than like and it, it, it kind of weird to be often we think of often i think of video as being kind of the lesser um form of transmission and of course there was lots that came out of the detail of their dialogue but that was a weird example of like them noticing, like re-looking, like looking back at that footage rather than the interim years of their version that they had been teaching. I've also got another experience of being dubious around the digital for, yeah, digital, um, making a duet with Leila Diallo and performing that across five years with a two year gap in the middle and not taking time at that point to, um, go back into our notebooks or not having protected them enough and only having the video footage. And it was really an experience like Mark Lorimer and Ursula Rob were saying yesterday of form taking over. So we were able to create all the same shapes as we could see on the video. And there's a vague bit of muscle memory, I suppose, but that we had totally kind of lost the essence of the work somehow. And I think I would, I would notate or archive that work differently now, but, um, in 2004 or five when we made it, it was like, we've got it videoed, it's fine. Like we can just like relax into the fact that that's captured, but it was like an absolutely untrustworthy way of um, recording it. I'm gonna shut up because I just take up too much time. Um, so, are you there? Yeah. Am we I hear speaking? this. Oh, sorry. I thought, Jenny, you were going to speak there. Sorry. No, I was going to say, did you want to do that? All we're right. each other messages. It's very weird having to I find this very strange. <laughs> yeah, no. So what we, were, what we thought we would do also, um, of course, questions from the floor, but we thought that we would, will we try and bring everybody in now? Or is it too soon we do that towards the end? Uh, I think it's fine. I think if you want to come in and join this as a panelist and we can have a sense of community for people who have been attendees, we, we can just do that it could be crazy but <laughs> so we just oh my god that. you're bringing <laughs> you're already here um, <laughs> all the people that are in the background have been hiding can now come into the space but yeah if you want to put your hand up as an attendee we'll bring you in so no pressure you might not like that but um you can raise a hand and you can come in and it's just nice to see everybody but did you want to uh, you talk about something else as we do that um maybe about yeah no i'm also conscious uh I'm, I'm also conscious, and Laura, that we haven't heard from you. It's okay. Here, I'm going to unmute oh, you. Yes. And I hey. suppose, yeah, I was just interested, like, just in relation to what we were talking about. Um, I suppose it was, it was when in your first movement response yesterday with the running up the stairs, when we first spoke about these responses, we, I was saying, you know, uh, if you want to take something from a work we've done together, or if you want to take idea, an idea from anywhere and, and kind of play with that, you know, as a starting place. Um, and you were saying in that work yesterday with the stairs, um, that was reconnecting, that, you know, this was connected to a piece that we did together uh, over the last couple of years with, with Finola as well, uh, with Nair and Philip. Oh, oh God, Philip, Kevin, Jesus. I'm so sorry, Kevin. I just... It's with Kevin. <laughs> I just said the wrong name. I know. <laughs> oh my God, I'm sorry. But it was just... Get the day, it's okay. <laughs> uh, I was just wondering how that was, um, because in that, at the start of that piece, 
uh, yourself Hi. and Kevin <laughs> and Fanola and Henry, well, uh, you know, are running down the stairs and running back up and you kind of use this as an echo to begin. And I just yeah. wondered, I suppose what always strikes me is that in dance, you know, you create such a rich world around what it is you're doing and you create this, um, yeah, a world around what you're doing. And then in the piece, you only get to express a small part of that world. And so what's been interesting about this for me is that I can see the other thoughts attached to that world of the steps for you. And I just wondered, I, I see that through the work, what Sarah is doing and also with Kevin, you know, with, with these films, um, just little moments of, of work that we've done and that then your, your, your bigger world is emerging. And I just wondered how that was for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, the thing is I, I directly connected to, I wanted to respond to what was coming back in my body and my memory from Neher. Um, and it, it was not, especially at first, it was not um, a movement. It was more like, a, because it was also a site specific uh, piece. And um, a lot of images came back in my mind, such as just the touch of the floor, the wooden floor, then the stairs, uh, hearing the stairs, people running, uh, the voices of Fenola or, um, or like also when I'm drawing on the on the blackboard, like I just had this memory and sensation and I just wanted to reproduce them. But I must say, I just um, happened to walk nearby um, in a place that we discovered actually in this moment um, being locked and we could actually in Belgium just walk around the neighborhood. And, um, and I was just wondering where I would take myself to just do some improvisation and the stairs just appeared at some point when I was walking and I was like just clicking directly and I was like okay this is a perfect spot and something that really um yeah I got reconnected directly into the piece and and then I just felt like exploring within the stairs everything that happened in her in all the different uh rooms um so yeah, there was a sense of uh, trying to recollect uh, on the on the spot uh, different sensations. Um, but I also, now that I'm speaking, um, want to connect with the, um, what you were saying about details earlier. Um, and it was really funny in this um, moment now of being like only with almost with yourself alone. And not being touched with um, so much with others, um, how it felt like I was just um, almost like I was diving into myself, and I felt like I just wanted other people to be able to see those details that I was feeling, but from the outside. I don't know if I'm clear with what I'm saying, but uh, yeah, I really wanted the camera to get closer to my body as much as I was close to my body at home um and how how this could yeah connect to people and in a way it's also um allowing an audience to get closer to a dancer a, a lot of times performances are happening a lot of times not all the time but like you know on stage and there is this distance and you just want to get a shot of like a hand or an elbow or yeah so this this idea also came into my mind of how to allow an audience with this thing we are doing online um, to get closer, even if there is no touch in a way. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, if I could add something, sorry. <laughs> because when we start editing, I, I kind of liked the sense of uh, simplicity. Like I kind of like all the, mm -hmm. all the, you know, the like daily life movements, like simply like just walking and just running, just, touching the floor, like, yeah. I, I, yeah, I kind of like the simplicity of the video and the, and the sense of the, the daily life movements, yeah. Yeah, and it can, um, actually, I think it's also something that we felt both, like, it was an opportunity to dance, but like what Sarah, you said, um, I felt like I wanted to dance, and at the same time, I just felt like showing what's, now what's happening now which is not actually moving a lot 
And um, as much as actually after these two days and hearing so much about movement and dance and and um, archiving and and seeing all these responses move from movers, I just feel like I want to go to a studio and dance and be like in touch with everyone. So this is great to feel that as well. But there was a, a part of me and exactly like Sarah at the beginning, I felt like I was almost happy that everybody was going through a moment of like slowing down and giving attention to yourself and to very detailed stuff and seeing what actually really matters on this moment right now. And I'm, I'm really scared that it goes back to this uh, thing of like, yeah, being creative, bringing you all the time. And um, yeah, so this detail thing and this simplicity was um, actually a need to share, mm -hmm. even though I just want to be with you all again. <laughs> voila, voila. <laughs> Well, can I just say, I'm kind of just figuring this out now. Thank you, Paul, for your tip. I'm going to bring everybody in, but you can keep your video off so you don't have to be part of the conversation because I'm trying to contact people and nobody's putting their hand up. So I'm just going to do it, but you, don't, you can keep your video off so you don't need to be present here. But if you do want to turn it on, you can. So there. <laughs> Susan has a question. Thank you. Hold on. Uh, I, it's starting off with Sarah and what she said about the time we need to digest. And I think we're really taking this time to digest. And it's also in reflection to the question that I asked Theo about, you know, and, and this is for everybody. It's, it's like, what are we digesting um, in this moment in time? Because again, if you're doing less with the body, but we can still digest and still um, absorb, um, information or um, inspiration or things and not to be product but to just inform ourselves and it's kind of this meshwork that I'm kind of playing with right now of um, what Vinola said about formalizing um, how she's looking at Theo's work formalizing the legacy and it's not about the thing itself but it's about what are the values or what are the ideas the principles behind it that you want to transmit into the future now. And then I'm getting back at the question, sorry, I'm going a long way around, about the material, the other stuff. You know, because I think we all work with a whole host of other stuff. And I'm thinking about Yvonne Rayner's um, uh, at Raven's Row, her retrospective. And it, what, it, the performances were there, but also these beautiful films, but also these beautiful archival papers that she wrote in her notes and all and i'm just thinking about the curation of this stuff and because i think it all kind of works in harmony together um yeah and and it adds getting back to when you were talking about pina you know it adds to this kind of subtext that goes behind the making behind the embodying behind the it's 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 all one it's not separate so Theo, if you want to talk, if, if there's any kind of particular constraints um, beyond the rug that you foresee, you would like to pass on, but then allow change, I don't know. I'm just throwing it at you. I'll talk a little bit about what we're planning at the moment. And of course, Century Project is in development, like it's not started yet. We're just dreaming it up. So it's changeable and it will change after this conversation. Um, but the... When I learned about Future Library, I read about it in a in-flight magazine. And some, I guess because it existed in a conceptual space, I was able to put myself inside of those ideas and respond to it and feel something from this idea of a work. So I didn't need to be there in the library to experience it. And I suppose something with Century Project, knowing that it's going to happen once every five years, just for 10 hours in one location, it's not going to tour. How does it communicate outwards its idea invite that kind of change in thinking for as many people as possible who are interested to hear about it so whilst the books are passed down each dancer's timelines so you inherit the book um, and would add into this what that holds is um, whatever drawings and notation come up through those 10 hours and also the kind of week or two week lead-in process where one generation meets the next 
So there will be um, practices and social activities and sharing dinners and going on walks. So there's an opportunity to reflect on that at that point in time, whatever's happening in that year um, and in that space and within that body, uh, but also drawings and whatever else. So then there was a question around, can the audience, uh, sorry, can the people who, the witnesses see that? Can they come and pick one up and have a look at it? I think at the moment, my thought literally today <laughs> is that the website really tries to hold the kind of plurality of the whole thing, or the multiplicity of it. So that those things that maybe photograph those, some of those writings with a permission of the person. So the, the website really becomes a body of knowledge of all of those different um, reflections. And also that the people who attend the work are also invited to write about what they witness. So that it's not this kind of, um, so everyone who is there is part of that experience and can reflect upon it. So it's not just the, the, the holding of the dancer, if you like. We had thought, and it might be possible that in between the one event, five year gap, next event, that someone, uh, a, I don't know, an organization might want to host a um, exhibition where those books are possible to actually flick through. I think like you were saying about Yvonne Rayner, like the actual matter and, um, analog aspect of that is really really special so it's not just on a screen but like the matter of it um, along with the carpet and the sound recording could be exhibited but I'm also kind of going what if this I mean this is my loom by the way behind so what if this carpet which is essentially when it's sewn together five by five meters is then disassembled and those 30 one by one meter carpet rugs are given out to people so the work only exists between people and this one event space wherever that is rather than having an institution who looks after the carpet or a gallery who exhibits it like maybe it's just between us and the people we ask to take it on so just kind of weighing up those different elements um part of this just last thing part of this came out of like with property being so valuable like who's to say that heaven forbid like dance four becomes a block of flats and that these spaces that we think are there forever greenwich dance exists but borough hall is no longer a dance space so um we don't know what's going to happen to those buildings and i know an institutional organization is not a building but like could a dance work hold a space a place for dancing within within the artwork rather than being always in relation to organizations and institutions to provide for that in perpetuity. So you're all welcome, you're all here. You can turn off your cameras if you don't want to be here, but it's lovely to see you coming in um, and that all the people that we've had carrying um, through with us all the time. If you have any questions, we, we, have, we have a good bit of time and it'd be nice to just, probably the easiest way to do it is to raise your hand and we'll get around to you. Silence. Yes, Dylan Quinn. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you said that like, like oh, again. I know, um, I said it because you, you, you're our, our saviour for this whole question. Not at all, no. Not at all. I think it's interesting in, in, li in light of the, the legacy and community of this. Can you speak up a bit, Dylan? You're, you're, we can hear you, but your sound is low. You were fine a minute ago. I, my, yes. Good. You might hear lots of children in the background, unfortunately, now. That's why that was on. Um, no, it's gone. Thanks. Um, so, yeah, okay. Yes, okay. Right, thank you. Sorry. Um, so, yes, in light of the, the legacy thing, the kind of hundred years thing, the thing that Theo was talking about, which I just find really fascinating. And, and also, and I think I'm harping on about it this a little bit because I mentioned it yesterday. Um, it, it kind of, I found it really interesting. It was really interesting the way Jenny, you brought us in. It was like our democracy it was going, okay, we'll give you a choice to be involved in this. Please put your hand up. Okay, nobody's put their hand up. And now I'm going to bring you all in. And then, now then you give us another alternative and you said, okay, now we can, you know, you can turn your, uh, your camera on uh, or you're off. But I find it really interesting. And without kind of going into the negative, where we're the, where we going with this? So in this next 50, 100 years while this project is going on, we're going to come out of this and we're already, already at the bottom of the pile in terms of support. And I kind of said it yesterday as well that whether actually as we come out of this, 
you know, the struggle for finances, the struggle to support, the struggle for the importance of what we do and the value of what we do is going to be even harder. And whether we actually can fix that in the system that we are in and whether we need to be more conscious of the change of system that needs to happen. You know, we're talking, I said yesterday as well, we're talking about a change in, in climate change and the changing emissions that are needed. You know, in this last year, we think that it's gone down by maybe seven to nine percent. We're thinking that that has to go down oh, until 2030 by 50 percent. So seven to nine percent every single year. And that's how an economy could work in this climate. And yet we're at the bottom of the pile. So it's, I'm just, I wonder how people are reflecting on that, how people are considering that in the current circumstances and how we make sure our voices are heard and the importance and value of what we do is taken seriously in the next stage of what we're going into. So yeah, would anyone out of the panelists maybe um, like to respond to that or anyone else? <laughs> Hi. Yeah, I, 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 I uh, hi Dylan. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, it's very important. Um, we have been uh, trying to make sense of many things lately, and this is more like in, in the global place that we are. I mean, it's, you know, it's interesting to go back to the body and then question the body and question how I continue to do and why. But we're inserted in these uh, social spaces, communities, uh, fun uh, funding structures, etc. And, uh, and at the moment, they all feel very fragile and it's quite scary. Um, and, and, and we have been seeing how, how these um, um, structures can get uh, fragile in the past, uh, with, with in Ireland as well and in other parts of the world. Uh, we know that we are a resilient sector. I think there is an opportunity at the moment um, and, and, and I think this, these gatherings that we are all in right now um, can show us that there is a mass. There's sometimes we don't feel that there is a mass in Ireland, that there is no, no momentum. <laughs> I don't know, something like that. And actually, since the last week or two, I have been feeling that there is something that maybe starts to engine up and there is a national campaign for the arts that is really doing an incredible job and I really um, move everybody to, to, to see what they are doing and to support and to the dance sector to gather more to make a stronger voice um, to maintain all of these uh, practices and inside of um, a system that it works. I heard yesterday Philip and for me it was very interesting when he was saying you know, the, the idea of just having a bit of money every week and that just, you know, is enough and could be good. And then maybe you, you search for more to do something bigger, but then you don't need that much all the time. And um, which of course it goes into, into the protection of the sector as civilians and not just artists as something separate of the society. So I really, I really think that um, we should all take this, um, also in that space of political seriousness uh, and then um, move towards those ones that they have uh, a closer voice to politicians and to, and to people. We, each one, it does in, in, in their own little space, you know, we do here in Tipperary and we keep everybody collected and um, fortunately is happening. But, and I think, um, this symposium is always, and during this festival, everybody trying to put things where people can be together can show us that we are still here <laughs> and we need more. So maybe it's just a good moment to not go out of the screens and forget, but come back. Thanks, Jasmine. I wonder also one of the things that has come through over the last couple of days it's been mentioned in different ways about just Dylan when you're talking about travel and the environment and this idea of local you know and what that means and does that mean a deeper engagement in what is around us which I think is is happening um, and in a way I wonder if we are slightly victims of our own ability to adapt so quickly uh, when anytime anybody mentioned um, the idea of slowing down or having a slower process. I think as a community, we also have to sign up to that idea of slowing down. I think, I think in general, 
uh, for the planet, people have to sign up to the idea of slowing down and deepening processes and just less of everything. And I just wondered, um, but I do think it's something, it doesn't work if, you know, 80% slow down and then 20 get super productive. Everybody has to sign up to it. Um, so I just wonder, Jeff, anybody had anything to say around that? You can unmute yourself. It's Paul. <laughs> I knew I knew you would do that. I'm going to unmute you. I'm so okay. <laughs> good, Jenny. Good, good, good. Um, I think like the the best thing I could do now is just to share what I'm up to, which is really around slowing down. Um, so uh, I've been quite productive and quite um, you know I've been someone who's interested in community and interested in making a difference and and being an artist and practicing being human you know like I'm, I'm someone who is um maybe you could say opportunistic and i've realized recently how us as an arts community we have really been we've, we got suckered just as much as the rest into this like um into my value as an artist has something to do with the amount of people that see my work or the amount of people that say it's quality work and um you know my time at tons to art of Wuppertal, um was particularly fruitful in seeing in in me recognizing how important it is for me that the day-to-day -day experience like being in the studio um, being with my family, being with people at a coffee shop, how I am at the supermarket, that is just, it's like so crucial and important for me that, that all of those moments are an expression of artistry or all of those moments, um, you know, like, um, this is a public forum, so I'll keep it quite moderate, but the environment in Wuppertal, for instance, mostly the only time that people really came together with some sense of humanity and working together and enjoying their craft was on stage. And that was a very small portion of our time together. Um, so yeah, I'm really interested in slowing down. I'm actually going to move to the country. Um, I'm going to learn about permaculture and I'm going to, you know, I started a little create something group uh, the last, I think we're on day 19 today. And it's just people from my life and people I don't even know. And it was the idea was to just create something for 21 days. And it could be you make a new recipe or, but there's, there's been this real like interesting thing that's emerged that people say, wow, I didn't actually realize how much artistry and creativity there is in, in just my arm, you know, one arm's reach in my life. Like the objects I have and the beautiful conversations or the relationships and, there's so much that's available for us to um, perceive as creativity and artistry that maybe we don't need to get on producing all the time, you know? Um, one of my best friends, he's, uh, sorry, one of my friends, he's one of the most renowned choreo current choreographers in the world. But when we hang, it's, it's all about productivity and it's all about the next piece and, you know, what, it's just like, wow, we're, perhaps we've lost some connection to humanity in this, you know, industrial, in the industrialization of, of us as humans. We, we got suckered too. So yeah, I'm interested in um, being a small scale, slow artist. Oh, and I have one, one sorry, just one other thing. I find it interesting. Um, yeah, the whole archive, because we're, you know, as, as artists in this, uh, in the archival context, we're competing with, uh, I don't know the current statistics, but at one point it was something like every day, 50 years is uploaded onto YouTube, just, just one platform, you know? So there's this massive vault of digitalized culture that's being archived. And how do we actually, yeah, like, how do we compete with that <laughs> in any, you know, uh, the, the Pina Bausch uh, Foundation is, is, is creating an incredibly complex um, archival system that will take years and years and years and years to complete. <laughs> and then who will actually find that and find those, those, you know, probably a very small portion of the population in the future, because we've got so much available. <laughs> you know, in the last two months I watched, I think one, 
one dance show online from the head national ballet it was awesome but i don't know i think it's a just pointing to the competition of archive of archiving all right i'm, I'm out can i just say something really small um <laughs> i'm just thinking what um going back to dylan's question and the necessity to not just adapt and respond and slow down and not fight the fight for the funding that we need for all different kinds of work which are maybe not so local or are still large in scale or touring and i was thinking about the what fergus was saying yesterday about um making a case for the funding of downtime so the slow time that we're appreciating now can exist within the funded structures rather than adapting to not getting money or working with less. And I was just thinking, I don't want to volunteer Fergus to talk, but it just made me think about that. Are you, just, are you here, Fergus? Theo, yeah, on that, just, just, um, just very quickly, it's like uh, I've seen from the, uh, the Berlin government, but also the, uh, the, how do you say that, the federal government of Germany, they are doing exactly that, which is amazing. They're like putting out stupend stipendiums and things for artists to just exist and engage in their artistry without any, you know, output or result necessary. You can get up to 27 grand for that, you know, like over the next, uh, I think it was nine months or something. And a seemingly very easy application. Yes, I see. Theo just fell over. But so there are those things. And just... Also, what it does to, to read that is like, oh, whoa, a, a, a culture or a government acknowledges that actually simply having artists engage and exist as artists in life enriches culture. So it is coming, but maybe not to your island <laughs> yet, yet. <laughs> maybe not yet. But I mean, uh, but Philip Connaughton was saying that um, yesterday that, you know, because there's the, the COVID payment that we have here, that this actually has been the most financially secure he's felt in quite some time, you know, because it's regular and there's a sense of not scrambling for, for funds, but actually a sense of being, of something being taken care of. Um, and it's not, it's a modest amount, but it's, it's still. Yeah, um, I was going to add in on, on yeah. that, uh, just talking about the emergency payment, Jenny. So it's 350 euro a week, which it is great. It's more when you think about splitting up your whole yearly wage, if you can get it every week, great. Um, but what was really interesting for me initially, I kind of thought, well, obviously they're not going to let us have it. You know, as a dancer, I'm not going to be entitled to it. Um, but because there are so many self-employed people who are now currently not working, we were put in with other self-employed people, which were not normally. So it gave me this kind of, um, I guess, hope for the future that we, they have now set a precedent that myself as a self-employed artist, I'm the same as someone else who's working self-employed. So it kind of gives um, a hope or strength in going forward um, that they can't just decide, no, we're not entitled to it in the future when they have put us in with this other category of people. Um, so yeah, it was just something mm. um, in referencing like Dylan's point of how do we go forward and not just um, let them put us back in our box, you know. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Thanks, Lucia. And I know Fanola wanted to say something as well. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Dylan. Yeah, well, I just wanted to come back as well to to the conversation yesterday, and I think it was Susan who mentioned the idea that that it's all about values in in the system and how the whole society views artists. And I think that made me think that, you know, on reflection, really, it's it's not just an artist. Um, I'm, sort of echoing as well what Lucia is saying, um, you know, it's not just an artist issue. This really is about rights. It's about the living wage. It's about access to, to sort of, you know, to be able to live decently. Um, and, and, it, and I think the argument um, needs to go wider than just the arts community or the arts council or the Department of Arts. It needs to go into, really into social protection, it needs to go into the law, it needs to be talking to the revenue commissioners and so on. You know, so that's a broader, sort of spectrum of uh, parties who really we need to be somehow engaging with. It's a really big ask. It's, we're not saying anything necessarily new, we know this, but it really is about how people live, you know. And we've seen now in this extraordinary time just how um, 
governments can galvanize and how they can actually change, even if it's temporarily, you know, they've, they've come up with some extraordinary uh, ideas, you know, um, that um, one may not, not have felt were ever possible or feasible or imaginable. Um, so I think we, we mustn't give up on hope, you know, that we can change things. I just wanted to say a very quick thing is um, I think there is one first step we need to take as dancers to really establish a, self of, a sense of self-confidence and value because I think dancers in general tend to be also very humble because we're facing our limits every day and we know how to try to put up with that and deal with that and to establish really a sense of professional value which means maybe first really obtain an acknowledgement as a proper profession as dancers and i think that would be really crucial also to have that self that sense and i know probably we have it at a certain level but as a as a profession as a sector that is a profession i think we're still doubting ourselves yeah it's very interesting i remember somebody saying um, to me about the you know when we were talking about because i was when i was still living in australia i was asked to do a report on on dance education in ireland and then you know ultimately years later you know i'm now involved in the new ba and, and i remember somebody saying that you know the fact that we had never professionalized our sector through a degree meant that it was never you know that on some level psychologically because you couldn't go in ireland to get a degree in this thing it didn't really exist you know and so there is something about that that, um, you know, uh, that feels very important. And maybe it is something particular, you know, not, not only to Ireland, but I think it is something that we, we've also had to deal with, um, which is the kind of moving abroad to train and, and professionalize ourselves and then having to come back and establish, you know, some kind of uh, a system here. So, I mean, um, when you just talked about professionalizing, I think that's, that's one important element that you can actually get a degree in this thing and it's not particularly a hobby. And you know, in other countries that's, that's quite a given, but actually for here, for here that's quite new. And um, hopefully that's something that, you know, kind of supports things moving forward, even from a psychological perspective, you know. I think it's, it's exactly, it's like a, a, almost like a collective psychological stepping stone. I mean, if we don't have that, it's even difficult to think we can step on something. Yeah, right. So. Could I just come back on, uh, on something yeah. I've said? Is that right? Sorry, I don't want to uh, talk too much. Um, I watched, I don't know whether you've seen on Twitter, a small video that Mona Altawi, who's a feminist activist, uh, 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 published, I think, yesterday or this morning. And, um, and it makes me think about what's going on in America as well. And you know George Floyd and and uh, and the fact of Rodney King so many years ago, um, and what what really effectively has changed. And Mona's video goes, you know, we talk about getting back to normal. Some people go back to normal, and she goes, "Fuck normal. That wasn't normal." Sorry if there's any children listening, by the way. Mine are, but they're kind of used to it. Um, and and also, uh, you know, she goes through this, and obviously, clearly, in her, in what she's saying as well, is fuck the patriarchy as well, and that's a massive part of that. But this going back to normal, this fact, that this idea that we will go back. To any sense of what normal is, um, doesn't work because it didn't. It didn't look after. So, uh, you know, as Lucia is saying, in terms of you know what that, the income levels and how now we're respected in that. And I think there's a, yeah, I harp on about it a little bit, but it's about going. Actually, there's a, a much bigger change that needs to be taken. And whilst not everybody has to take all the parts of it, and some who lead the the professional qualifications and go, this is a professionalizing this standard and making sure this is noticed, that is a valuable thing. I think it's somehow understanding our part in the chain along that, that we really start to be part of a bigger conversation about how the society will change. Otherwise, we will end up at the bottom of the pile again and again and again, and we will go back to what no, a normal, and a normal that suits other people. Thanks, Dylan. Just a few rounds of applause for that. <laughs> So if there aren't any more, um, I think we're sort of out of time. Yeah, and we should let people enjoy the rest of the evening because, I mean, let's face it, the sun is shining. It's Ireland. And, you know. Just, yeah, it never happens. Never Can happens. I say something really fast? Yes. Becky. Oh, Becky, yes. Hi. I just want to thank you both for doing such an amazing, incredible, insane thing. Yes. And, um, 
just much appreciated. I think everyone here will, yay! <laughs> so thank you very much and thank you to everybody. It's really wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Just, it's not, I'm going to read out a quick thing just to end things because just to, to say our thank yous. Um, so we want to thank the fantastic artists who contributed to the symposium, all of the movers and the presenters for their amazing work over the last couple of days and the way that you brought it together uh, and made it happen and were so independent in that, just amazing, thank you. Um, I wanted to say to um, people that if you missed anything that you would like to see, um, that the, the DDF digital capsule is going to be open for the next month. So there will be access to any works that you missed and you can get it, uh, you know, you just go into the website or you go into the DDF website and after, a, you know, after a month, then it'll start to go into more of an archive repository. And then I'm sure uh, we need to work it out, but I'm sure you will have access to that as participants and attendees. Um, I want to just really quickly um, I really quickly want to just thank the Irish World Academy of Music and Dance at the University of Limerick, so particularly to director Dr. Sandra Joyce. I want to say a massive thank you to Dublin Dance Festival, to Benjamin Perche and Karina McGrail, um, to Leah Johnson, who's been with us throughout, to Caroline, uh, to Ruth, to Tina, to all the team. Thank you so much. Um, also to say, yeah, it just wouldn't be possible without you. None of this would be possible without Noelia Ruiz, which is the Liz Roach Company Digital Comms Manager, and also Moira Darcy. So if you guys are there, I realize they've been on your panel for, for the, over the whole time. So maybe you might just show us your faces, no? There's Leah. Hi, Leah and Noelia. Mm. I think everyone's worried that they haven't done their hair. <laughs> no, I, ca I can't join. No. Before, hang on. After all of that. After all of that, I need to be. I'm gonna. Uh, ask, give I've just answer. asked you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <Hello. laughs> thank you so much. And Moira, where are you? Hey, Moira. <laughs> so thank you so much. This has been a mammoth undertaking, and um, yeah, we're going to. Sleep. Sleep. Yeah, we're going to sleep for a couple yeah, of we're days. Gonna, <laughs> we're going to go to bed for a couple of days. But then if there's any further information or anything, you can, you can get in touch with us on the info at modesofcapturesymposium.com or you can come through Liz Roach Company, www.lizroachcompany.com or Dublin Dance Festival. Um, I also want to again thank Dylan because you're a sweetheart for helping us on this. Thank you so much. And congratulations on your fantastic festival last week. Um, Yay! Yeah, you know, well done to everybody. And yeah, stay well, stay safe. Big love. Thank you so much. Jenny, do you want to say anything? Um, yeah, just to say it's been incredibly rich and it's just a very intense and strange experience to do this. It's like being a DJ and I don't necessarily feel that's my forte. <laughs> and I don't know when I'm going to come down either and what that's going to be like. But anyway, um, um, so yeah, just to say thank you for all of the really rich um, encounters and I feel like I'll need some time to digest it, which is also a feature of this online space that everything takes a little bit longer in some weird way, even though you can connect really quickly. So um, I feel like I really want to come back into everything again and really just think about this a little bit more deeply. But um, so amazing to meet you all and wish we could have a drink together and hang out and we will one day soon. So lots of love and thank you.